Hi, I'm Fan Hai. So I'm tech lead of a Google Cloud ML Computer Inference Team. So I will spend the next few minutes talk about uh, how we do the high performance ML serving with Ray TPU and GKE. Yeah, here, first let's see, okay, what, where our stack located? First, uh, if you see the bottom right, it's hardware. It's a TPU, GPU, it's memory. Your HBM and your SRAM L1 or L2 cache. And then your computer, this is your flops. And then your I.O. side, PCIe, network infinite band, and all those things, MVLink or RCI. So this is hardware. And what is the user expectation? User expectation first is high performance, the low latency, and high accuracy, the inference output. And here we located, we are in the software, we are end-to-end -end inference stack. So we leverage the hardware, and we output the best performance, low latency, and high accuracy result for our users. Yeah, here is our main project, the Jetstream engine. Uh, here I'm give you very high level, 1,000 square feet high overview how we do the optimization. The first one, we do the compute batching. As long as the request come in, we will serve the request, and uh, we do the parallel compute. We have the tensor parallelism, data parallelism, and uh, we are planning doing the pipeline parallelism. And on this side, we right now have uh, the inter-4 and inter-8 quantization. Uh, another two is about attention kernels. Yeah, thank you for the research for these good, good papers. We have the flash attention and the page attention. And if the user or our engineer wants the block-wise computer, we do have the Palace kernel. And another optimization, okay, we do a lot of uh, communication and uh, compute overlap, like how can we push from the HBM to the CPU DRAM? How can we overlap the communication from the N block to the N plus one block? And another one is about how can we scale to the multiple hosts. I will talk more on the multiple hosts in the next slide. Yeah, talk is cheap, show me the code. Here is our engine repo. Yeah, please feel free to check our engine repo. If you like, please give us a start. Yeah, so next slide, I'll give you the background. So Kiwi Cache is one of the organization to save the redundant com computation. So I'll give you the comparison right there. On the first half, you do the compute without KV cache. On the bottom side, we reuse the KV cache. Which you can see the difference, right? So with the above side, even your current token is Q3, you still need to process all the previous token. But with KV cache, right, what we need to do is only the Q3 token. So this saves the tremendous of computation. Uh, Another slide I'll share the difference between the stack batching and the canoe batching. So stack batching is very easy to implement. So you wait all the requests ready and you compute. After everything finished, you release the results. So but the thing is, if you see the white part, right, this is compute idle. So two things to the compute idle. I need to wait every request be arrived. And second one, I need to release the results until the longest sequence to be finished. So you can see almost half of them, they are compute idle. So with continuous batching, right, uh, once the request come in, I can process as soon as possible. And the second one is that uh, after the short thing finish, it will release that result for that slot. If you see the white part with continuous batching, there's almost no compute idle. Yeah, so for the next slide, I will show how we to the scale to the multiple host. Currently, there are three scale, there are several skills. First, the model size is 200 billion. And the content length, right, from 1K to 1 million. And the latest people could even do 10 million or unlimited sequence. And another one is that, okay, to utilize the computer flow, the engineer use a large batch size. This cause another memory pressure. So we need a multiple host. Give you one example, right? For the latest Llama 345B, if we use the V5E4 as one host, we need 16 this host VM to serve the Llama 345B. Yeah, uh, since this is re um with the re plus just dream, we can support the multiple hosts. Three dimension here, we want the high informi informi performance 
and also the good usability, and also heterogeneous. So how can we do that, right? Uh, so on the performance side, we are native Jux multiple controller. It's same as you run the Jux on the one chip, the same performance. And on the usability side, right, uh, both Ray and Jetstream are open source. If you find the issue, you can go there, check code, or, or open an issue, and then the engineer will help you. And uh, from the single to multiple host, you don't need to change any code. It's just a flag change. And uh, on the heterogeneous side, you can run on CPU, TPU, and you can also run on the GPU side. Uh, for next two slides, I will show the high-level architecture how we do the multiple host. Yeah, first one is interleave serving. So when we talk about interleave serving, it's about uh, we do the prefill and we do the decoder in the same host and the same chips. Here I'm showing the example how we do with the JAX. So there is three layers. The top side is NumPy. So this you can with your JAX engine or with your PyTorch engine. And in the bottom side is something like you need to compile your code to the machine code. And in the between is just code to do all together to collect all those things from the different host. Yeah. Uh, next slide is the discretion serving. If we have an interleave serving, why we need discretion serving? Because uh, interleave serving is good. You can do the prefill and decode in the single chips or the single host or multiple hosts, but they need to do it together. Once you finish the prefill, you do decode, then the prefill. But you cannot optimize only for the prefill or decode because they are bound together. If you want to optimize the prefill, Latency or you focus on the decoder, you need to separate them, do them separately. So uh, another main change if we need to do the distribution serving, right? Uh, so it's about uh, the KV cache. You need to transfer your KV cache from this preview host to the decoder host. So we leverage the real object store to transfer this uh, preview cache. And we have the real engine to add our treater to say, okay, which host to do the prefill, and what other host to do the decoder. And for this, it's, uh, it's pretty flexible. You can do the config, see how many hosts I want to do the prefill, how many hosts I want to do the decoder. And especially you have the production traffic, you can scale up and scale down based on your traffic. Yeah. So I will hand over to my colleague Richard to talk more about the re TPU and the Kubernetes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so uh, first, I want to talk about uh, where can Ray help with all of this. So Fan Hai just talked about how uh, uh, Jetstream works on a high level, right? So uh, one thing that uh, Fan Hai talked about is that uh, in, uh, when you're experimenting with models, you could be scaling from a single host to multi-host, depending on the size of the model, number of parameters, and uh, a number of things. So one, uh, what you really need is a compute engine that can really seamlessly scale from single host to multi-host um, without having you to change any of the code. And uh, Ray can do this in a very elegant way. And um, not only that, Ray also uh, is able to have a, a flexible support for interleave and fully disaggregated mode. And um, so we'll, we'll be uh, demonstrating how this will work uh, with uh, Jetstream. Uh, furthermore, for the Ray serve, uh, sometimes uh, in production, you need uh, production level support for features like auto scaling and load balancing. Uh, RaceServe offers these uh, production level features through a easy to use Pythonic API that uh, integrates really nicely with uh, 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 PyTorch uh, Jetstream. And finally, if you're running in a platform like uh, Kubernetes, uh, Ray also has a number of uh, OSS uh, Kubernetes native uh, support through uh, the Kubray operator. So this makes it really easy to deploy your Ray clusters on top of uh, your existing uh, Kubernetes clusters, including GKE. Uh, so this is a quick overview of uh, the Ray on TPU use cases. Um, so if you look at the technical stack, uh, on the foundational level, you have the cloud providers, uh, which, of course, uh, so uh, GKE will be one of the providers. And as you move up the stack, you, you, uh, there is a Ray core library, which is a low-level distributed uh, computing framework with uh, the, the core APIs. Um, so 
over the past year, we've uh, done a number of uh, uh, changes in RAID core itself to enable RAID to support TPUs natively. Uh, this includes the ability for RAID to recognize uh, TPU devices as if they're uh, just GPUs, so in the same same uh, uh, in the same pattern as GPUs. Um, we've uh, enabled RAID to schedule uh, tasks and actors on TPUs, and um, we also added support for auto scaling, so RAID can use as auto auto scaler to provision new TPU node pools. Um, as we move uh, even further up the stack, we have the Ray AI libraries. Um, so today we'll be talking about uh, JetStream um, on Ray, which is uh, part of the uh, which is uh, uh, part of the uh, inference use cases. Um, in the future, we'll have other uh, integrations with uh, fine tuning and training. So this is sort of a high level picture of how a Ray cluster on Kubernetes works with uh, TPUs. So uh, suppose you have a CPU node that's uh, hosting the Ray head. Um, this will be where we place the Jetstream deployment. And um, this is also where processes like the Ray auto scaler would reside. Um, and then suppose you have uh, multiple TPU nodes. And um, imagine that these are uh, part of uh, TPU topologies. So each one is a multi-host group. Um, on the multi-host group, you will host your uh, real workers, and uh, each one will contain a shard of the model. So uh, there are multiple ways to shard a large language model. You could use uh, uh, data parallelism or tensor parallelism. But uh, for now, just assume that somehow we've uh, sharded this model across multiple workers. And the key here is that um, when you're auto-scaling this cluster, the TPU group, uh, the TPU slice has to scale up or down as a group. So you have, you have a model that's, uh, that's too large to fit on a single node. So the model has to fit on um, multiple TPU hosts. So when you're scaling up, it's critical that uh, these groups uh, scale up and down uh, as an atomic group rather than by itself, right? So we made uh, changes to the Kubernetes operator to support this pattern. Uh, this was previously not supported in uh, Kubernetes because they understood uh, each uh, replica as a single Kubernetes pod. But um, over the past year, we've enabled uh, uh, features in the Kubernetes to scale up uh, multiple Kubernetes pods as a single atomic group. So when the Ray Autoscaler receives a scale up request, uh, this will uh, talk through the Kubernetes node provider to the, uh, the Kubernetes operator to say that we are adding one more replica of a multi-host uh, Ray worker group. And this will translate into a Kubernetes pod creation request. And uh, this will make the uh, nodes available at the uh, at, uh, Ray level. So what does a, a, a single replica of a Jetstream deployment look like? So if we look uh, into the Jetstream replica, each one is a group of uh, Ray workers, and uh, each one is hosting an engine shard. Um, the, each of the shard is deployed on a single Ray worker node with uh, potentially uh, with many TPUs. So in this case, there are four TPUs in, uh, in each uh, Ray worker. And um, Ray has a nice feature for, uh, called uh, placement groups. And uh, it makes it really easy to schedule these uh, multi-node replicas at the application layer. And then we can use uh, Ray itself to schedule the prefill and decoding tasks on Ray workers. So this is a, a, a walkthrough of uh, what a Jetstream uh, deployment looks like. Um, it's a little hard to see the code, but uh, on the right hand side, you can see that uh, in a, uh, if, if you're familiar with uh, Ray serve, this will look familiar, fairly uh, familiar to you. There is a init function, which uh, basically, this is where you initialize your, your uh, LM. And um, here we're doing this uh, initialization with uh, the interleave 
uh, slices. So suppose that you detect the number of TPU slices in your array cluster, and if you're running interleave mode, so as uh, Fang I mentioned earlier, uh, the in interleave mode, each TPU slice uh, performs both a prefill and a decode. So you can just uh, assign all your TPU slices to interleave. But if you were doing disaggregated mode here, uh, you would act, you can actually uh, assign separate TPU slices for prefill and decode. Now this is actually very uh, flexible and is, is quite powerful because potentially you could have different uh, hardware requirements for prefill and decode, and you can uh, assign different uh, uh, runtime parameters like the, the different batch sizes to achieve uh, higher throughput. So if you really want to customize your setup to uh, optimize your throughput performance, uh, this is uh, uh, Ray has a flexibility to allow you to do that. And um, scaling up is very easy. So uh, all you had to do is um, annotate the Jetstream deployment with the, the TPU topology that is desired, uh, the number of replicas, and the auto scaling configurations. And then you can create this uh, decode function, which calls into the uh, Jetstream orchestrator to, uh, to send your, uh, to process the decode request. So this is a quick walkthrough of a Jetstream deployment. So yeah, and uh, this wraps up our talk. So I uh, uh, hope you find it helpful. Thank you.